Now the third method is the cost based method. Now you're the employer. How much would you realistically pay to have someone replace you? If you'll remember in a prior business tips video, I had you list all the different hats you wear all the different positions that you occupy. Well, when I started the sign business, I was the boss, the production guy, the shipping manager, the accountant, etc. It was difficult for me to come up with a number to replace myself. I couldn't say I was the sum of all the positions because clearly that was not the case. However, I was certainly worth a lot more than a single position, certainly a receptionist or an installer, as I had the skills of multiple positions. It was very difficult, and my solution was to hire a business consultant. To come up with a cost-based value, you must think about how much it would realistically cost to replace someone of your talents, whether it's one single skill or a combination. Calculate a weighted average of all the various tasks you do to come up with an overall rate that you would be willing to pay someone to do the work that you do each day. Then again, divide that number, what you're willing to pay, by the total number of hours necessary for the job. In summary, I have shown you three methods of calculating your time. The first method is what you are actually worth at the moment. The second method is what the market will pay. And the third method is what cost you would pay to replace yourself. Take an average value of the three, and that is a good base number to start with in determining your actual hourly value or your hourly base rate. Okay, so now you know your hourly rate. Now what? Here's an example of what to do with this information and why it's important to know it. If you know your time happens to be worth, for example, $40 an hour, then you should always pay $19 of shipping instead of spending one hour at the store. If you know your time is worth $40 an hour, then you should always buy the direct flight that saves you four hours, even though it costs $100 more than a flight with a stopover. Once you know in dollars and cents how much an hour of your time is truly worth, you can make better decisions on a daily basis. Now in my story earlier, I mentioned the value of my time of $40 for IT work. It was a number for me to use as a cost for my time, not a number to be billed to the client. Your time value is no different than a product's value. If you buy a t-shirt for a dollar and print a custom logo on it for another dollar, your cost is $2 for that product. But that's obviously not what you're going to charge for the shirt. Here's an old familiar joke. A man goes to a mechanic and says, excuse me, sir, I'd like you to look at my car. And the first mechanic takes a good look at his car. He looks all around and he said to the client, yes, so that'll be $15,000. $15,000? Yeah, I'm sorry, your engine is blown and I'm going to have to replace it and do a lot of other work. So the gentleman goes, I'm sorry, but I don't have that kind of money at the moment, so have a nice day. On the way home, he stops by another mechanic. And the mechanic starts listening, tries to turn it over. The other mechanic said the engine was blown, and he wants to charge me $15,000. Well, my price is $1,500, and I can have it fixed in five minutes. So the guy goes, okay, you got it. And he pays him $1,500. The man goes over, he listens, he takes a hammer, and he goes, whack! Engine starts right up, purrs like a kitten. The guy goes, I just paid you $1,500 for a, something I could do with a $2 hammer? Well, the hammer cost $2. Knowing exactly where to hit it cost $1,498. Know your value. Confidence, not cockiness, is a large part of perceived value. Use your value to calculate what you should charge for a job and then set the price or rate. Knowing your perceived value can help you make big strategic decisions about where to spend your time. Here are some questions for you. On which projects should your business focus? Which uses of your time are ineffective and should be eliminated from your routine? Should you start a business that could pay off big time in 10 years but won't make any money right away or work in a stable job with a reliable income? What is the best way to manage all these trade-offs? These questions and more will be answered in the next Business Tips video, Risk versus Reward. For now, work on determining your actual value, your expected value, and your perceived value, and we'll take it to the next step in the following weeks. Have a wonderful week. This is Javier Unzueta with Hobbies Woodshop. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.